All right. So first of all, let's uh, let's create a new application. So let me do something else. Let me open a terminal. You know, the terminal is that weird uh, window with, generally speaking, black background and white text on it. And you look like a hacker. Like, hey, look, bam, I'm typing things. Look, wow, 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 wow. Yeah, that's a terminal. Yeah. Uh, how do you open the terminal? If you are have, if you are a Mac user, you just search terminal, easy peasy. If you're a Windows user, I would recommend you something called PowerShell. It's, it comes with Windows, so you don't have to install anything. And if you are a Linux user, you know how to do it. So, the first requirement, the first thing is we have to install something called, let me go back to my home directory, something called create react. So create react tab is a piece of software provided by Facebook and surprisingly to speed up the process of building the structure of your react application. Back to the 90s, Probably when Google started, yeah, the first line of code of Google was right-click new file index.html. Yeah, that was probably the way Google started in a garage somewhere in California. Yeah? That has changed a lot. Today, setting up an application with React requires quite a lot of effort. Many plugins, many dependencies. It's not just it's downloading React, double-click, next, next, next. No, no. There is, there is some complexity. Thankfully, because of Create React App, we can easily bootstrap our React application. So, the way to create your app is simply by typing create dash react dash app and then the name of your app. The name of your app will be simply a folder in your system, in your home directory, in your folder. Try to avoid weird characters like tildes, accents, things like that, yeah? apostrophes. Just keep it raw, keep it simple. So today, I'm going to build a list of things. What is that list of things? I don't care. One thing about coding is, guys, I don't care what you build. You should build something you feel motivated about. I don't care if you, lead, you build a list of cars, a list of fashion brands, a list of porn actors, I don't care. You, something that you wake up and you feel motivated to code. Because if you feel motivated, you will push hard. If you don't feel motivated, you won't push hard. Yeah? So today, I would like to create an app called Best Movies, maybe. I'm going to display a list of movies. Once again, feel free to change the topic. Football teams, uh, I don't know, smartphones, I don't, I don't care. Yeah? So then, look, after type pressing Enter, now Facebook is downloading all the plugins, utilities, dependencies, blah, 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 blah. Essentially, long story short, Facebook is preparing our application. Yeah? That may take two or three minutes, depending on how much money you spend on your laptop. Yeah? But eventually, it should work. In the meantime, in the meantime, let me... Uh, present you the code editor. Which code editor are we going to use today, guys? Visual Studio Code. Be careful, yeah, code. Personally, when I work in a company, I'm not very opinionated about which code editor our developers use. To me, the important thing is the result. I want to see the resulting code. How did you manage to generate that code? I don't care, I don't care. So if you have any favorite code editor, like Sublime, IntelliJ, Atom, whatever, go for it. If you are not very opinionated, if you are not a fanboy of code editors, let me recommend you VS Code. VS Code is a very nice tool created by Microsoft. It's free, it's open source, you got monthly releases, it's super performant, it's really cool, yeah? it's really cool. And does anybody know in which language VS Code is written? Correct, it is JavaScript. VS Code is a fantastic example to demonstrate the power of JavaScript. It's a desktop tool. It's something you download it and you install. It doesn't look like JavaScript, but it is JavaScript. Yeah? So once you open it, 
Now we need to open the folder containing our application. You see that open folder link? So now we simply have to identify where that folder is. If you are a Mac user, this is going to be fairly simple to identify because on Mac, you can go to your home directory and then it will be there. If you're a Windows user, that's important guys. If you're a Windows user, finding your home directory, it's a bit more complicated. Your home directory in Windows looks something like that. C colon slash users slash then your username, for instance, sexyboy25 slash your project name, best movies or best phones, whatever. Yeah, the name of your app. So make sure you know where your app is. And once you've located it, you click open. So once you open it, I'll tell you something. Technically speaking, I could continue using that terminal. Yeah, I could do that. I could do that, but here at Codery, we focus a lot on productivity. We want to build more stuff in less time. To me, to me, I would prefer not to use this terminal. And the reason is, imagine that I want to run a command to perform an operation, to deploy my app to the cloud, for instance, yeah? So if I run the command here, I need to go back to the code that is here, and vice versa, I need to do ping pong, ping pong, between the code editor and the terminal, yeah? To me, that goes against productivity. With VS Code, thankfully, we can see an integrated terminal. I can display a mini terminal here at the bottom. And to do that, you go to, on top of the screen, you cannot see that, but on top of the screen, on the right-hand side, one of the menu entries is Terminal, and then you got New Terminal. Look what happened when I click on that. You see, at the bottom of my screen, I can type some <coughs> cool commands. That's more convenient, that's more convenient. So, talking about JavaScript, does anybody know what is the de facto standard way of launching an application in JavaScript? NPM start, that's correct. Yeah? In JavaScript, we have to start the server. The server is something that will offer your app. When you go to www dot facebook.com you get some content because there is a server obviously facebook has thousands of servers but there is a single server somewhere in europe that is giving you all the material all the content the text the images the videos yeah the likes everything so to start a javascript application the only thing we need to do is go to a terminal and type npm space start so let me show you what happens when we do that. When you type npm start and you press enter, look, I'm not touching my laptop, but my system redirected me to my default web browser, which is, in this particular case, Google Chrome. Yeah? And now, even though you cannot see anything, if you follow my steps, you will see that the browser is trying to render something. And after a few seconds, you got the welcome screen. So that's, if you get this screen, then your laptop is ready to build the next multi-billion app. Yeah? You got all the dependencies you need to start working with React. By the way, that's the React logo. Yeah? If it's the first time you spot it, that's the React logo. It has nothing to do with the Chernobyl TV show and HBO, yeah? React logo. So, Many developers struggle to read the structure, yeah? However, look, that screen is very slick. We don't have many structures. You have a single line. Edit, source, app, and set to reload. Edit, source, app, and set to reload. What that means, Facebook is inviting us to go back to VS Code and open on the left-hand side, src, and then app.js, you see? And that's interesting. Is that language any familiar to you guys? HTML, right? Looks like HTML at least. Looks like HTML. And on top of the file, is that language familiar to any of you? 
That's JavaScript. In other words, by the first time in history, thanks to React, we can combine in a single file JavaScript code and HTML code. That has proved to be a great idea because it simplifies our layout. Yeah? Generally speaking, when you change your HTML, let me rephrase that. If I want to add a button on my web app, so whenever you user clicks on the button, we display a message, whatever. Yeah? When, if I want to build that functionality or a menu, I click on a menu and I want to open the menu, uh, that involves HTML and JavaScript. So it's great to have these two together here. But technically speaking, if you know a bit of HTML, can you see, can you spot anything smelly here? Is there anything not really HTML valid? Class name attribute. That's correct. Even though that looks like HTML, strictly speaking, it's not HTML. There are some subtle but important differences. One of them is class name. That's probably the most obvious one. How do you define a styling class in HTML? Yeah, but in HTML, how do you de define class? It's just class. In HTML, you will type class. In React, however, you have to type class name. It goes beyond the scope of the session to explain why. But the thing is, the thing is, at least Facebook did something really well. It didn't try to remain the wheel. When you first started to work with Angular, well, everything was new. So many things, so overwhelming. With React, however, the message is, even if you have no idea about React, even if you have no idea about JavaScript, even if whatever, if you know a bit of HTML, at least, fantastic. You got that for free. You don't start from scratch. So to prove my theory, I would like to do some changes. Here in the bootcamp, we look after UI, UX. We are not asking our students to be the next Leonardo da Vinci. But there are some basic principles on UI, UX that you need to, to satisfy. Kaimi, for instance, is, a, is really good on UI and, and UX. If you have any questions, I'm sure she, she can help you. Yeah? But let me ask you something. In my, you know that in this building, if it's the first time you came across and you survived, uh, we've got many artists, many exhibitors, many, many weird people, yeah? Not weird. Special or different, yeah. different people compared to from, from a coder point of view, yeah? From, I'm sure they will have, have the same feeling on the other way around. But for me, for me, what they do it sounds very exotic. This guy is very famous, by the way. Imagine that I want to follow his steps because I'm really enjoying this sort of abstract art, and I ask him, hey, I want to paint something, I want to build something cool, yeah? So if I ask him, what's the best way to start painting a masterpiece? Do you think it's the best way is, I give you two options, to start painting on top of a, on an empty canvas, a white canvas, or start painting on top of something else that someone else has done already? Blank canvas, yeah? If you want to paint something, you start from scratch. You don't take la, the Mona Lisa and you change the nails. It doesn't, that doesn't make sense, yeah? You start from scratch. So the same principle applies to coding. If you want to become multi-trillionaire, you don't want to have the React logo on the screen. So let me get rid of everything. The best code possible is the one you aggressively delete because that piece of code will never fail again. And that's literally what I'm going to do now. That header tag, out. Out, it's a PC, let's start from scratch. So let's display a message. Welcome to the movies app. Happy face, for instance, yeah? This is just a, an example. So let's see what happened if I go back to my web browser. Even though it's very small, very small, I hope you agree with me that this is a much better starting point to bring our creativity, layout, color, animations, things like that. Yes, yeah, much better starting point. Probably you didn't notice, but look, as soon as I save the file, the web browser is picking the changes. 
I don't even have to refresh my web browser. Historically speaking, you always had to manually press the refresh button. Not anymore. Productivity, guys, productivity, once again. The title, the title however, looks a bit small, very tiny. I'm zooming the screen a lot, but that's the real size. It's very small, yeah? That's not a good title. So does anybody know how can I change the size of my text in HTML? H1, I love that. H1, you see? So here we can prove our theory. Even if we don't know anything about React, if we know that in HTML, we can change the size of the text surrounding it with H1. H1 means heading one, it's a heading. Number one means it's the biggest one possible, yeah, somehow, semantically speaking. So if we do that, boom, you see? The title looks much better, much bolder, much sexier. Fantastic. So now let's do the following thing. I'm going to display the list of my favorite movies. Everyone has a list of favorite movies. I would like to show you my list of favorite movies. Once again, feel free to change the topic. So first of all, I would like to display the title of the movie, and then we will learn how to drop the image. I want to visualize a picture associated to that movie. So displaying a title is fairly simple. Let me, for instance, add a div. You know a div is just a container element. It's just a box in HTML. It means nothing apart from that. And inside of that div, let me add, for instance, an H5. H5 is a heading. Is it bigger or smaller than H1? Smaller. You know, guys, if you like to speak in front of an audience, let me give you a quick advice, because I've been doing that for many years. Sometimes the speakers, they ask stupid questions to the audience. What day of the week is today? Yeah, this is like a ping. You know what a ping is? They want to see if anyone is paying attention. Yeah? So that's why we ask these stupid questions. Yes. So feel free to drop your favorite movie. In my case, one of my favorite movies is Megasark versus Crocosaurus. Just the title, yeah? Just the title, and then, for enough, I got the app title, and then I got the movie title. Fantastic. So, next step is, I want to display the picture, a picture associated to that movie, because just text will be quite boring, yeah? I want to have some multimedia stuff. So, to display a picture, we need to follow a sequence of steps. First of all, nothing particularly exotic, go to Google and find a picture. Yeah? So there's nothing about JavaScript or React here. So if I go to Google and I search Megasark versus Crocosaurus, you see, I got many pictures about the movie. So I will select one of these and I will save it into my project. So I need to download the image. Be careful now, guys. I save the image. Should I save the image in my, into my desktop? into my downloads folder, or where? Into the project, that's correct, that's correct. When you create a React project, all the resources should be local. The project should be self-encapsulated. We shouldn't have the picture in our desktop. That doesn't really make sense, yeah? So, once again, please identify the location of your project. So, and once you identify it, two more things, very important. Don't save the image in the root folder of your project. That won't work. All your pictures, I cannot zoom that, that's a limitation of my Mac. All the pictures should be dropped inside of the SRC folder. SRC folder. And one more thing, personally, I would suggest you to rename the picture. You know, when you download the stuff from Google, the image names are, generally speaking, random. Lots of weird alphanumeric characters, yeah? So I'm going to rename it because I will have to type the name of the picture in a minute. So I don't want to be typing A, C, D, J, Y, whatever, yeah? So let me type something meaningful, like Megasark. All right, so now let's learn how to display the picture into the screen. To display a picture, we need to do two things. Let me bring an analogy here. Imagine that you are at home 
and you need some milk. You open the fridge and you realize you don't have any milk. So you go to Tesco and you buy a pint of milk, but then you drop it into the fridge because you don't want to consume it now. You don't want to drink the milk now. You want to drink it maybe in a couple of hours, yeah? as an example. There are two steps. First of all, bring the milk to the fridge and then drink it. They don't need to happen immediately. So when talking about using resources in React, it's the same principle. First of all, we have to import the image. Import the image means leave it inside of the fridge. Yeah? How do we import the image? Look at the syntax. We need to type import, then a variable. You can type whatever you want next. I'm going to call it Megasarc. We'll talk about naming conventions in a minute, but you can take whatever you want. And then from, finally, we need to identify the location of the image. If you pay attention, my image, Megasarc, is on the same folder as my app.js, my entry file. Do you know that has nothing to do with JavaScript? This is something basic about software. How can I access a file that is on the same folder as the current file? That's correct. With dot slash, we can identify that the file we want to access, in my case, megasar, I think, dot jpg, is on the same folder as the file I'm trying to bring it from, yeah? Be careful with the extension, jpg, png, be careful with that. Eh? It should match exactly the name of your image. So, once I got the image imported, will it be available on the screen to our users? Will it be displayed or not? Not yet, right? Because I'm putting the milk on the fridge, but I'm not drinking the milk. So now I want to drink the milk. To do that, we need to add some HTML. How do you add an image in HTML? href? No, it's not href. img tag, correct. img tag. And then what else? How do you refer to the location of the image? Uh, href. href, wrong. Source. Source, SRC, correct. So in HTML, you will do something like that. Yep. Yeah? That's the way we work in HTML. However, this is not very React friendly. Look, on line number three, I imported a variable. So now I want to bind that variable on the SRC attribute. Something very important, very, very important. That variable is a JavaScript variable. Whenever in your HTML you want to refer to a piece of JavaScript, you have to surround it with curly braces. Remember that forever. You'll have to type curly braces until your fingers start to bleed because that's the most powerful character when talking about React, the curly brace, curly brace, curly bracket. Yeah? It's literally everywhere. Inside of the curly bracket, then I paste my image name, Megasound. You see, two steps. First of all, I import it, and then I display it. Will this work? I don't know. Let's have a look to the web browser. Aha. You see? I got my fantastic movie picture on the screen. So that works fine. Let's talk a bit about semantics. Imagine that you are doing a job interview and you need to build something similar, and you are arguing that Megasark may not be the best name for that particular movie. And you decide to rename it to Brexit. Will it work? Yes? No? Yes or no, right? I mean... <laughs> I love when some people say, will it work a little? No, something doesn't work a little, yeah? You, you, either you are pregnant or you are not pregnant. You cannot be half pregnant, it's half pregnant. So that's the same problem. Either it works or it doesn't work. And look, interestingly enough, still works. 
still works. That's probably the only scenario where Brexit works as expected. Yeah? Why? Because what we are doing is we are saving the picture, the image, the bytes, yeah, the content of the image into that variable. And then we just display it. So it doesn't really matter how you name it. But from a naming conventions, what do you think? If you go to a job interview and they present you that piece of code, what will you say? Is it a good name or not? And why? Say it again? I agree with you. Even though it works from a semantics point of view, that's weird, yeah? Why the hell this guy created a variable called Brexit if it has nothing to do with Brexit? It's just a movie, yeah? So even though, technically speaking, it works, that smells. It proves that you have no idea about the semantics of your software, the software you're building. So let me call it Megasark again. And then a bit of programming culture. Megasark, to me, is one word. But I'm sure you've seen something like that. Some people like to join words with a capital. You see, capital S. I can zoom that a bit more if you want. See, capital S. So first of all, will it work now? No. Why not? Correct. Look, even though the name is the same, can you see that here I'm using a capital S? In other words, is JavaScript case sensitive? Yes, it is. Boom. Megasark is not defined. What the hell? I define it. No, you didn't. Yeah? Capital S. So once you fix it, then it works perfectly. So, does anybody know what's the name of the case? You see that case? I have two words, Mega and Sark, and I join them, converting the small s into a big s. So, from a programming culture point of view, does anybody know the name of the case I'm using here? Camel case, that's correct. This is camel case. Yeah? Why camel? Because it looks like the shape of a camel, Maybe, I don't know, yeah? What if I'm a PHP developer and I do that? That syntax is very popular in PHP. What's the name of this case? That's correct, that's snake case, yeah? Equally valid, you see, it still works. What if I go back to camel case, but I decide to capitalize, to make big, not just the second word, but also the first one. You see? What's the name of this case? That's a bit more complicated. That's correct, that's Pascal case. Why Pascal? Because there was a very old programming language called Pascal that used it a lot, blah, blah, blah. And then, the last one, the last one. All these three cases are valid. Camel, Snake, Pascal. The following one is not valid but I'm sure you already came across it at some point in your life. You see, I'm joining the words with a hyphen, with thus. What's the name of this case? I will accept two answers. One if you are about 45 years old, one if you are below 45 years old. Why 45? I just made that up. One if you are senior old developer, one if you are a young developer. So if you are, if you've been coding for 20 years or even more than that, you may refer to that as Lisp case. Lisp, similar to Pascal, all programming language, yeah, they use it a lot. However, if you go to Stack Overflow, you know what the Stack Overflow is, guys, by the way? Stack Overflow is a very popular website where you don't know how to validate an email address and then they, someone helps you in that, yeah? So according to Stack Overflow, if you ask, if you ask a question, hey guys, I'm using list case, but it doesn't work, ha ha ha, Jeremy Corbyn, I don't know, yeah? 
many developers, all the millennials, will, will maybe think, what the hell is Lisp case? I never, never heard that, yeah? The reason is, on the forums, now the millennials refer to that as kebab case, yeah? You know when you go to Fabric, on Emilio Fan and Castle on Saturday night, and you get drunk, and at 5 a.m. you're super hungry, and you go to the off-license, and you buy a kebab, if it makes any sense? So that's kebab case. Why kebab case? Because the hyphen looks like the blade going through the meat, yeah? Whatever. Anyway, so we can, we've seen different coding styles, yeah? Not kebab, kebab doesn't work. You see, if I do it wrong, VS Code complains immediately. But apart from kebab, apart from kebab, camel, pascal, snake are valid. Which one should we use? Camel, pascal, or kebab? No, sorry, camel, pascal, or snake? Camel? All right, so if you go to a job interview and I'm the interviewer, my next question will be, okay, Camel, why? Convention, yes. Convention declared by who? Who specified that convention? You, you, you're right, you're right. You are right. The preferred way of creating variables is that camel case. Why? Because there is a convention. Someone, Jesus, somewhere, said, guys, just the community. From now on, let's create variables using camel case. Yeah? But now it's important to know who is that person or that organization. Any clue, guys? Technically speaking, there are multiple companies trying to define the conventions, but one of them is clearly the most popular one. So does anybody know who has the ability to define these conventions today? I'll give you four options. A, Google. B, Airbnb. C, the Conservative Party. And D, Sorry, uh, Thames Water. Right, raise your hand, whoever thinks it's Google. How many people? No one thinks Google. One, two, four. Thank you, Florin. Who thinks it's Airbnb? No one? The Conservative Party? Boris Johnson, one. And Thames Water. Everyone else means you have no idea, right? I'm assuming that. Either you have no idea or you are not even paying attention. So, you know how many people got the job? If that was part, you know, we work with companies like Sky. Yeah? Uh, Sky is it's very difficult to break into Sky. Uh, Sky is probably the best company I work in my life. And it's very difficult, but we managed to to place people at the sky. So if you work, if you want to work for a sky, they do like a, I don't know how they call it, but you, you go one day with them and they have like 40 people in a room like this one because they want to smell who can work for a sky. And they ask this type of questions. Team challenge. Team challenge, yeah, whatever they call it. Team, yeah, fair, fantastic. So do you know guys how many people in this room good get the job at the sky four one or none for sure yeah it's not thames water it's not the conservative party it's not google it's airbnb you know airbnb right hello guys you know airbnb thank you so airbnb when you go to Ibiza, yeah, and you rent a bedroom, whatever, Airbnb. So Airbnb has the most popular coding style guide. And it's so popular, you go to Google and you search Airbnb JavaScript style guide. It's really good, it's really good. It's really good because it's very simple. It's just a document. Don't print that document, of course, but it's just a document. And it's really good because it tells you how to code. Patterns, good versus anti-patterns yeah? and many times they explain they give you the reason 
why camel case? Why this? Why that? Yeah, they tell you the reasons. Okay? But it's important to know that Airbnb is defining these styling standards. So according to Airbnb, let's use camel case. So we got our first image. Now, very quickly, I'm going to copy and paste it. So I'm going to add two more images. Essentially, it's repeating the same steps. Yeah? So I'm going to do that very quickly with two more images. The second one is going to be shark topus, half shark, half octopus. And the last one will be shark exorcist. Likewise, I need to go to Google and then type the image, shark topus, download it. So, you know, there is nothing really new across these steps. I'm just, you know, following the same axiom. Save image as Sark Topus, and then finally uh, Sark Exorcist. Is it Exorcist or Exorcised? Any native English? Exorcist, fantastic. Thank you very much. Cool. Sark Exorcist, save image as, and now Exorcist, whatever, yeah? Cool, fantastic. So, back to my code. Remember, let's import the new images. Import uh, Sark Topus from sarctopus.jpg, and then finally import uh shark ex shark exorcist from exorcist guys i'm going to break my app on purpose to see if anybody can spot the problem so shark topius and shark exorcist let's see if it works it's not going to work i broke it on purpose Look at the error. Failed to compile. Module not found. Can't resolve shark topus. So if I show you the code, can anybody tell me why it didn't work? That's correct. The extension of the image is wrong. Sarctopius is a P JPG. However, very romantically, I rename it, I rename the extension to PNG. Yeah? So make sure you, you satisfy all the characters of the picture, including the extension. And after doing that, you see, you may argue that you know pictures have different size, whatever. This is not a UX session. If you like UI UX, please join us on the 17th of March with our friend Kaini. So we'll talk about these things. Yeah? But at least you agree with me that the pictures are there. So it's clearly working as expected. You may be thinking, why this guy added free pictures? Let me present you the problem. Here, as part of our bootcamp, we are project driven. We create apps from the first day. The first app we create is called Cold Flicks. So Cold Flicks is the result of combining Netflix and Cold Eerie. Yeah, you know Netflix? You get the idea of how Netflix works, right? List of movies, you can navigate, you can get the details, you can, you know, Netflix. So we built a simplified, of course, version of Netflix. Um, imagine that this is the next Netflix, the actual Netflix. Uh, by the way, talking about Netflix, something I noticed the other day is someone bought the coldflix.com domain someone in Thailand it's a pirate website they do a lot of illegal stuff <laughs> so we have nothing to do with this website guys someone buy the coldflix domain to offer pirate content yeah so we are hello FBI we have nothing to do with them anyway so if you build the next Netflix you have thousands of movies potentially or TV shows whatever yeah so imagine that you go live and suddenly our UX specialist says, oh, cool, that looks good. However, however, the title of the movies 
is very small. Let's change the size of its movie title. And you said no problem at all. So at the moment, can you tell me how many lines of code do I need to change in order to increase the size of my titles? That's correct, three. If we're going to change from H5 to H3, for instance, we have to do it three times. Why three times? Because we got three movies. If we will have 1,000 movies, then we have a problem. We will need to update the title 1,000 times. You see the problem? That strategy doesn't scale. It doesn't work really well. It doesn't work really well. This is one of the reasons why React became so popular so quickly. Because with React, we can componentize our HTML. In other words, I want to create some sort of template. And thanks to the template, I want to minimize the duplicated code. How do we create a component? How do I create a template in React? It's fairly simple, actually. You have to create a JavaScript function. If you are not familiar with JavaScript functions, I'll show you a few videos afterwards. But to create for now a JavaScript function, you just type the keyword function and then the name of your component, starting with capital. That's important, guys, yeah? because that's a React component. Function movie. And then look at the syntax. Return, hell, oops, hello meetup. Just some basic HTML, you see? So now, the question is, do, will that message hello meetup be displayed or not? What do you think? <coughs> no, that's correct, not, not at all. Why? Because we have declared the function, we have declared the component, but we are not consuming it yet. So how do we consume it? Look at how sexy the syntax is. A React component is just an HTML tag, like div, Label image. Boom. That's it. So movie, that line will be replaced with whatever the movie component returns. Hello meta. That's a blue. That's it. That's it. Hello meta. Can I re-display the same component multiple times? Of course I can. That's the beautifulness about React. You can reuse the same piece of code. It's super cool, right? All right, so let's do that. I don't want to hard code the same stuff three times. I want to render that once and then reuse it. So let's do something. Let me get rid of everything. Only three movies. And now I paste it here. First of all, what do you think my component my app will display now. How many movies? Three. Will it be the movies I wanted? Ah. Someone says that it will display three movies, but it will be the same movie three times. And that's right. Movie, 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 mega star, mega star, mega star. Let's have a look. Once, twice, and three times. Yeah? So, you know, that's not fully correct. That's not what we wanted, because we wanted to display the movies with different titles and different pictures. Before going that far, if you, as part of a job interview, and we train these things a lot here at Coding, if you send that code, it doesn't matter if you fix the problem, you won't get the job. And the reason why you won't get the job is because that looks horrible. So when you write HTML code, you should look after details like indentation. You see? Let's pay attention to the bottom side of the screen. That code is beautifully, beautifully indented. We've got the, the root div and then H1 and then the movie. But look at how difficult it is to read that piece of code. Why? You see all these spaces? I mean, do you agree with me? That looks weird. Even if it works, eh? that looks very weird. So until you have the ability to manually indent the code correctly, let me show you 
a hint. With Visual Studio Code, you can do right click anywhere, and there is a sexy option called Format Document. If you press, pay attention, guys, to line number 9, 10, 11, and 12. 1, 2, 3. You see? To me, personally, that's not perfect. However, I hope you agree with me, it's at least much better. We don't have random spaces. You know, the code looks better. Yeah? Cool. All right. So now, let's learn how can we dynamically pass some custom data. Even though the structure is the same, the template is okay. I got the title and then the image. I want to reuse the template. In reality, I want to change a few things. For instance, the name of the movie, obviously. So the syntax is very declarative. The syntax is beautiful. To change some content on this template, the only thing we need to do is to pass some attributes. This is HTML code. You can pass whatever you want. For instance, title. And then I can pass the title of my movie. Megasart versus Crocosaurus. And then title is Sharktopus. And then title is Shark Exorcist. What do you think, guys? Will now the title be dynamic? Will I have three different movie titles or not? And why? Because you're not passing those titles into your function. Correct. From this point of view, we are doing a good job. We are passing data. However, the component, the movie component, is ignoring that data. You see, it's still hard coding mega sound. So, how can we bind? How can we connect with this data? It's fairly simple. First of all, we can pass what we call in JavaScript an argument. You can type whatever you want here. The de facto standard calls it props. So props is an object. It goes, without, it goes beyond the scope of this session to explain what an object is. But that object contains all the information that we are providing. For instance, the title. So if I got a props object, can anybody tell me how can I display the title property out of that props object here? Props.title. Props.title. I like that. I like that. Let's have a look. Let's see what happens if we run the app now. What the hell? You see? Props.title. You know when it's your birthday and you subscribe by accident to any website and then you got a happy birthday message and they tell you something like, hello, dollar user. And you're thinking, who the hell is dollar user? Because they fail to transform that template into your name. Hello, John. Hello, Lucy, whatever. Yeah? So this is what we call, technically speaking, technically speaking, string interpolation. We want to transform something, a variable, into the actual value of the variable. Do you know what do I need to do to transform this hard-coded text into the actual value? Correct. Do you remember what I told you before at the beginning of the session that whenever you want to access JavaScript, you have to surround the expression with curly brackets. So if we try again, aha, now it works perfectly. So let's learn how to change the image because the picture is still hard-coded. Thankfully, the process is very similar. We will add a new attribute, for instance, image. I can type whatever I want. And then with curly braces, because I want to access JavaScript variables I imported on top, I can pass the name of the image, like Megasark, or like Sarktopius, or like Sark Exorcist. Will it work? Will I get my three different pictures? What do you think? Why not? That's wrong, right? Still pointing to Megasark. So what do I need to type here? With or without the curly brace? With, correct. Props.image. That's correct. And now look. Boom. Brilliant. I hope you agree with me. 
that approach is much more elegant. It's beautiful. And the reason is, if now our business analyst, our UX specialist wants to change the title, how many times do I need to change my code? How many lines of code do I have to change? Only one, that's correct. Instead of H3, for instance, I can type H2. And then that increases the size of the text. So that's pretty much the way uh, React works. Thanks to a componentizing strategy, we can reuse our code very easily. We've got five minutes left before we play table tennis. So let me show you how we train React. You are more than invited to practice React. So as part of Codery, that's free, so you, you're more than invited to, let me go to the website. So if you go to, you can see a play button. Let me change the resolution. So when you click on that play button, then you can do training. So with the training, you can practice your coding skills very easily. From the very, 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 very basics, this is mobile friendly, by the way, to the most advanced questions you can imagine. So let's do something really, 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 really basic. And I'm going to play that simulating a mobile phone. Yeah? So let's see if it works. So what we got here is we present you a series of exercises, five exercises, and here we want to check if you've learned how to deal with props. In this particular exercise, we are telling you, please developer, create a welcome component. We're going to give you one dynamic property, the user name, Peter, Anthony, whatever. And then you as a developer, you have to display that message. Welcome to React and then the name of the user. If we swipe to the left, then as you can see, we give you some options. So let me zoom it out a bit because that's very big, right? Here you go. I think it's a bit better now. So you see, we've got on the left-hand side the function is partially implemented. And then on the right-hand side, you need to choose the right answer. Let me get rid of my face. So as it is at the moment, can you tell me, guys, what's the right answer to this problem, A, B, C, or D? C, that's correct, props.user. Why props.user? Because that's the name we gave to the property, yeah? Props.user. We select it, and then if the solution is right, here you go, we get confetti time. That means that the answer is correct, so we can jump to the next question. The last one, let's do the last one. On question number two, very similar, very similar, we have a precedent component but, and it receives two properties, first name and last name. We are displaying uh, presidents of the United States of America. So we have two gaps to fill. So on the first one, what's the right answer? A, B, C, or D? No one? D. Why D and not C? They look very similar, right? Correct, you're right. JavaScript is case sensitive, so you definitely have to look after details. And likewise, on the second placeholder, the right option should be A. Yep. So let's see if it works. It works. Yep. So that's the idea. I'm going to skip the next questions. Let me just show you what happened at the end. Two minutes left. So at the end of the challenge, we will... Let me zoom it out we will give you a score, and that score tells you how good you are, how good your performance was. Yeah? That information is very useful to the companies we work with because they can, deterministically speaking, evaluate your talent. So we are running multiple coding challenges. For instance, this happened literally today. So as part of these challenges, so we can, for instance, compare, you can compare, you receive the same questions, and then you can see how good you are compared to your colleagues. If you like analytics and stuff like that, as part of the platform, you can get many, many details about the best player of the day, the best player in each country, 
the highest scores, many different details. You can see that, for instance, flooring is today, or has been today so far, the best player of the day, as you can see here. Yeah, We've got many famous developers. I'm sure you know people like Giacomo. We've got Google employees, Facebook employees here. Actually, this is the most used cold training platform made in Europe so far. So feel free to use it. It's completely free. And if you have any questions, just let me know. In 30 seconds, if you like this session and you want to call professionally before it's too late, let me show you something. You can book your place for our next cohort starting in two weeks, in less than two weeks, actually. And as a way to tell you thank you for coming today, we would like to give you a 20% off if you book your place within the next 24 hours and if we still got voucher, available vouchers, only free, free vouchers left. So if you book your place with that promo code, you get 20% off. Once again, guys, we are not making business and that's the reason why we are not going to continue running this. But until summer, we will continue helping people to become professional developers. So thank you very much, guys. I hope you enjoy the session. You are more than happy to stay, to have a chat with me, with Florin, of course. Thank you, Florin. Thank you, Kaini. I'm looking forward to see you soon. Thank you.